In today's video, we're going to look at how to effectively manage and share your data using Analytics Hub. We'll walk you through key concepts step-by-step, step, demonstrate how to create the underlying BigQuery resources, and show you how to manage your Analytics Hub assets using various controls. Remember, learning is a journey that's better shared, so don't forget to engage with us in the comment section if you have questions or if something piqued your interest. Also, hit the like button if you find our content useful and subscribe so you don't miss key future videos. Ready? Let's get started. We're using a brand new project here, and we'll first navigate to BigQuery, our launching pad for today's tutorial. Here in the SQL workspace is our standard environment for interacting with BigQuery, but we'll be taking it to another level with Analytics Hub. This tool amplifies your data sharing and management, but builds on standard BigQuery data sets, so there's not much new to learn. Now let's create some tables in our data set and inject some example data. We're going to imagine that we're weather scientists sharing some temperature and humidity research data. To provision our example data, we're going to create a table using the cloud storage import option. It's important to note that Analytics Hub doesn't care how you feed your data into BigQuery, be it via less frequent methods like CSV imports or batch data pipelines or constant real-time methods like streaming data pipelines. It works with all methods smoothly. For your convenience, we're providing the CSV of example data plus the Python script that whipped it up in the video's description. With Analytics Hub, datasets lay the foundation for data sharing and listing, but we can leverage all sorts of features for making those datasets intelligent, connected, and fresh. Specifically, things like materialized views and remote functions can power our dataset with data in other datasets or in entirely different, perhaps non-Google Cloud data stores, yet do so in a controlled way. Let's make this concrete with an example where we'll set up a new dataset dubbed Weather Europe. We'll break down our data by region to address the needs of different clients and better address inconsistency in temperature units, that is, Fahrenheit versus Celsius. Next, we're going to craft materialized views in those regionalized data sets. We're doing this in our freshly minted Weather Europe data set, and we'll filter to include only European data. There's a small error in our raw data, since Europe is a continent, not a country. Let's iron out this wrinkle in our SQL before generating this materialized view. These views behave like separate tables and can be queried directly, yet they refresh automatically when our base table data is updated. This is sort of a best of both worlds between tables and views and gives us some nice control over our Analytics Hub datasets without any complex pipelines or ongoing operational overhead. We've now equipped our Europe-based clients with reliable data but have blocked their access to US data. We'll mirror this process for the US data to hammer home the principle. Before we press on, it's critical to realize the plethora of controls we have over our tables, materialized views, and other assets in the BigQuery. For example, feel free to take advantage of advanced BigQuery features like row-level access policies, column-level access policies, authorized views, sensitive data handling with Cloud DLP, and fabric layers like Dataplex. Remember, Analytics Hub is just a layer on top of good old BigQuery. With our simple datasets looking good, let's jump over to the Analytics Hub page and fire up the API. The exchanges are where we can bundle together our data listings. Let's christen this new exchange as demonstration. And for the most part, we're good with the default settings. We'll also create a couple listings which match up to our two regionalized datasets. The more that you can provide things like metadata, contact information, icons, and rich text descriptions, the better, but we'll keep things simple. In the subscriptions section, we'll get a list of our data subscribers, which we'll be growing shortly. 
Now, on to the very important component of identity and access control, which also ties into the subscriptions. At both the exchange level and the listing level, Analytics Hub leverages the standard IAM system of Google Cloud. This is not just for service accounts, users, or groups, but also more anonymous forms of access, like any unauthenticated user or authenticated user. For instance, we could designate all authenticated users as principals and assign them basic Analytics Hub viewing permissions. This effectively makes our listing publicly discoverable, and we'll show that discovery interface shortly. Additionally, we can enable users to self-service subscribe to our listing through the Analytics Hub subscriber role. This makes our listing discoverable, as well as the data available for anyone who decides to subscribe. Without the subscription permission, the data publisher will receive the subscription requests to review, approve, and provision. These highlighted roles are pre-built Google Cloud roles, and it's important to note that you can go one level deeper with permissions by creating custom roles. Let's quickly add a new IAM grant and finish up with looking at the discovery and subscription experience. If we jump over to our listing by clicking the share link, we can then add this data set to our project, just like any other data consumer would if they have permissions. Without public discovery or subscription enabled on this listing, it's a more controlled and private experience, but similar to the public approach and style. Upon accessing that linked data set in BigQuery, we note that we can now query the data as a subscriber. Given our materialized dataset setup, the subscription is granting access to our curated, regionalized data and not the underlying raw data. Note that we cannot save or export even aggregates or results data owing to the controls that we established when creating the listing. Remember that typically the publishing and subscribing users of this data would be different and oftentimes from different organizations. We're using the same user here just for demo convenience. We can keep tabs on who is subscribing to our data, whether via a self-service or a control process by visiting our listing and proceeding to manage subscriptions. Here, we also have a user-friendly interface to terminate subscriptions as needed. Finally, let's examine the discovery features around Analytics Hub. If we navigate to Search Listings, we can identify published datasets. These could either be discoverable data, in which case we need to request access, or they can be immediately available for use in our project via self-service subscription. Recall our earlier publisher side discussion of IAM, which controlled this detail. For these more public listings, having polished attributes like icons, detailed descriptions, and comprehensive metadata is preferable compared to the rushed example that we set up earlier. As an example of a dataset that could be immediately downloaded, we could bring this Genie Index dataset into our project. Don't hesitate to pose any questions in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and please enjoy responsibly.